Hello there. Just doing a follow-up uh, to my previous video, which was the first impressions of the Siglent SDS 804 XHD. There's a few questions and comments, so I thought I'd uh, address those. One of them was the noise. What I did was I downloaded a decibel meter application and just laid it in front. And uh, I took readings off of this oscilloscope, my Keysight, and also my bench power supply to see on a sort of what range of uh, equipment was. So the Siglent measured in at 44 decibels, the key site measured in at 49 decibels, and the um, co-red bench power supply measured in at 46 decibels. So out of everything on my bench, that makes noise, with the exception of my ascend core, but I'm, I'm not really counting that. This is the quietest, so it is what it is. They all make noise. They're all kind of a droney noise, and it's, it is what it is. So the other question that came up was the Wi-Fi. You can approach that a couple ways. Uh, you can either have a wired connection like I've got here. You can do a wired to a um, what, and it's what Siglent recommends, which I think is a little uh, interesting. But it's basically a Wi-Fi bridge adapter that is powered by USB but hooks up to your network cable. So it's effectively a wired wireless connection thing. Um, a dongle would be a little more convenient for size and space, but that's the only real option as far as I'm aware. I did try to enter a Wi-Fi key in this and it would not take it. The Siglent key generator does generate keys for various things. Wi-Fi is one of them and yeah it would not take it in as a option here. So the other thing is uh, if the driver was supported, this is a uh, TP-Link W725N, I think, something like that, wireless adapter, which is the same chip as the Siglent dongle. So if one did work, it would probably most likely be this. And maybe they'll add it in support one day. It does run Linux, so I'm sure it could be added. But as you can see here, and from my experience, if the driver was loaded, a light would come on on this adapter at some point, indicate that something was going on, that the driver was loaded. Without any driver loaded, there will be no light on this dongle. So unfortunately, uh, Wi-Fi dongle is not an option for the moment, and I don't know if it will be. I will put in a link in the description to the TP-Link USB wireless bridge thing that you can use if you want to. I am assured that works, so. The other thing that's kind of funny is this thing is really a bear to get out. I ended up using pliers, I think, to remove it the last time I installed it. I did try TP-Link W825N adapter as well, and that also did not work. I wasn't surprised, though. I thought if anything worked, that this would probably be the most significant chance of working. So that covers those two questions. One other one was about transparency of the waveforms. And I'm not quite sure what was meant by that. And maybe I misunderstood the question. I, I'm not 100% sure. I will try to do my best in explaining what you can do with waveforms in this. So right now I've got two channels on the scope on. Only one is showing. I've got the channel one hidden right now. You can select either visible or hidden here. And then that'll bring the trace up showing. And this is actually the trace it's triggering on and the other is the signal from the wave generator. So uh, you can adjust the intensity, but it doesn't matter. See, if I bring that waveform, it's still going to block off uh, the waveform that's behind it. So there is no transparency in the waveform itself. The only option you can either do is, you know, put one in front of the other or move it. That's also an option if you want to move it around. But other than that, the only other option you have is to just hide the waveform itself. And that's that. Uh, so you can use your touch gestures to uh, change the vertical and horizontal resolution as well. Now, one thing that kind of surprised me and I didn't find out until recently is that the horizontal resolution, you can't uh, finally adjust it. You're limited to what it will let you adjust to in software in that as you go in, you'll see the steps. I'm at 50 microseconds per division, then go to 20. 10. But I can't, for example, go here to the time base and I can't um, select that. I can't change it to say 15 microseconds, for example. It will not let me. Let's see, it went to 20. It goes to the next available thing. So if I wanted to do, say, I think like 180, for example, 80 microseconds. It'll give me 200. So 
there is no fine um, horizontal adjustment, which I find kind of odd. It's interesting. I'm not sure if it's deal breaker for anybody, but it's um, different. It, it, it's different than in the key site. I can come over here and I can adjust uh, fine measurements. So I can go to what am I going to? Steps 180. I need my glasses. 188, 184, 180, 178. Or 176, 172, 168. So I can do some pretty fine adjustments there in the horizontal resolution. So yeah, it's up to you if that's a deal breaker. It may may be for some people, may not be. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's the other oddity out of the way. And I don't think I really had any more questions as far as I'm aware. If you have any and I can answer them, I'm glad to. So feel free to ask any questions. I, I can't exactly answer everything, but I, I can try my best. I'm going to get rid of uh, channel two here. Just remove that off the generator. I just need two waveforms for an example of uh, that transparency thing. Um, I'm told that you can do some sort of transparency waveform on the Rigel, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen that, so I'm not sure. Uh, the next thing I want to do actually is I'm going to bring channel one back, be invisible, reposition it, and then I'm going to go to a, uh, a demo on the scope here. Uh, what I want to do is repetitive pulse with ring. Okay, I'm going to auto set both these scopes. It's kind of interesting what they set to, but I'm going to hit the auto button on both. I'm just going to adjust my horizontal time base to match that one. So I'm going to uh, do two demonstrations here. One is for the vertical resolution and the other is for the memory depth. So on both these, I'm going to hit stop. And what that is effectively doing is it's storing the waveform in memory so you can look at it. Uh, you're not looking at a live waveform, you're looking at a still waveform. This is an 8-bit scope and this is a 12-bit scope. So this is uh, showing the difference in the vertical resolution. I'm just going to make sure the vertical resolution and time base match. So we're looking at the same thing. So I'm at 200 millivolts per division, same here. And then my time base is two microseconds there and it is two microseconds here. So I'm matched exactly. So this is the difference. This is the 12 bit waveform and this is the eight bit waveform. We're pretty much uh, comparing likeness to likeness as far as the comparison to each other. Hopefully that helps you figure out. To some people, 12 bit might be more important. Um, to me, it's more negligible for the stuff that I, I mess around with. I'm not saying it's, it's nice to have. It's just that uh, the memory depth on here is way more worthwhile to me than the 12 bit resolution, if that makes sense. And that's just going to vary. It depends what you do with your scope, what you plan to use it for. And it's not bad. All right, so let me go back to auto scale on that. Auto on that. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the memory. The key site here has one meg points memory. The Siglent uh, unlocked has a hundred meg points memory. They both are capable of two giga samples a second. And for this demonstration on both of them, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Let's say. 50 milliseconds, I believe. I'm just trying to get like for like on the settings here. So 50 milliseconds. Okay. On both of them, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop again. And then this is where I'm really just impressed because when I capture some signals, I'm looking sort of over a very long length of time sometimes just to sort of get an idea of what's going on but to be zoomed far out for example so my my field of view and the signal is wider if i can zoom out this far hit stop on both um, then zoom in and then we'll see the difference here i'll do the key site in the first one but you can see what the signal looks like and you know what it looks like live uh, versus here so you can see where the individual points are taken on that and then on the siglent we'll zoom in and when you look here, 
it looks pretty much like a live signal. So to be able to zoom in this far and you know you don't have all these obvious different points like here it just gives you an idea of the memory depth difference between the two. I mean granted this is a bit significant this is like a hundred times more memory depth than that but it will definitely give you an idea on what the difference in the memory depth is. I'll zoom out and I'll capture five seconds worth of data so this will be right in the time I'm talking to you. It looks like five seconds to me without taking my glasses and looking directly in front and blocking the camera. I can't exactly see, so I'm guessing, but it looks like five seconds to me. So that's five seconds of data, and I'll hit stop on there. Five seconds is a long time when you're talking about electronic signals. So yeah, you can definitely see that it's not as clear, but five seconds, is that that's a very long time, so that's... Not bad for, for what it is. So, so far I'm pretty happy with my purchase. The only um, downside is that it did go down in price by about 50 bucks recently. Canadian, but oh well. Alright, now I'll hit stop. And we'll zoom in and see what we get. So, yeah. This is a usable representation. This is not a usable representation of the signal. Like I said, this is quite handicapped because it does have a lot less memory, but it's just to show you the difference. And I did run across that when I was doing some signals, uh, communication signals that I was examining. When you end up with waveforms like this, it's not useful data for uh, communication or being able to determine what's going on in signals. So yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and hopefully that gives you a good example of memory depth. Don't get me wrong, the Keysight scope, I did not pay for this. I won this in the contest. I am glad to have this. It also has a function generator in it, uh, which is very useful because I play around with audio stuff too. I, I trust the measurements on this a lot. It's, it's a good quality scope, but this one does contain a lot more features. I wouldn't be able to go out and buy this scope um, because it's like, you know, if you bought this new, uh, I know they don't sell it anymore, but if you bought this new, it would be like three times the price of this scope here. So. Yeah, like I said, it's useful. I like it. It's good quality and it's professional level gear. But at the same time, if you're on a budget and you're looking for some features, this is a good scope to have. This has probably gone on long enough. Hopefully everything works and it's recorded okay. And I get to this edit. I've already shot this once and I wasn't happy with it. And hopefully this time is good. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments, uh, your thoughts. Thanks.